That's fine. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, taking a look at the last three years, going back to 2010 through January 31st of that year. Which document? I'm looking at the summary. The summary that has a three-year <coughs> breakdown. Overtime that was expended through January 31st in 2010 was $62,000 to change. Uh, 2011, which I think we all agree that by January of that year, or through January of that year, we probably had an excess of 40 inches of snow. The expenditure in overtime there was $85,921. And then this year, through today's date, the expenditure in overtime was $77,289. I don't know how it's possible, given the fact that we've had under 10 inches of snow, we may have had one or two black ice situations that, as of this date, were only seven, eight thousand dollars under what we expended last year for snow and ice and overtime. I don't know. But you need to explain that. Again, 31,000 of the 77,000 are directly related to responding to that October storm. 45,000 or 31,000? 31, 31, in overtime. You mentioned 77 in overtime. 31,000 of that is directly related to the storm cleanup. Okay. That town-wide curbside pickup of all the branches and taking all the brush down at the garage, we had to staff that. So that's, that, you can change it. We can put it anywhere you want. You can take it out of that account, I guess. I, I'm just, just to make sure I get the numbers right. $45,000 was the number to take care of the tree, tree removal. Labor and expenses. Labor expenses. 31,000 was just. 31, roughly 31,000 over time, I believe, is that's the number. I don't have the numbers in front of me. Okay, so part of that 45,000, 31,000 of it is overtime. Correct. Okay, thank you. So part of the, so the 77,000, 31,000 of that was that one event. Yeah, but the response to that event. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't have a lot of time to look at these. I just got these in an email. But when you look at it, Dick, and you add this up, it's 200, you have basically expended so far, $265,371,000. If you want to go ahead and take out your $45,000, that's still $225,000 in a really, really low winter. I, 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 I'm not on a witch hunt. I just want to understand it. Well, I guess look at, I you look at the total of expenditures for 2011, it's $898,000. And I know for a fact that a piece of this was to buy materials that we would have normally have bought at the end of last year and we asked that they not be bought to keep the snow and ice budget into some manageable form <coughs> so and this might happen again due to fuel costs okay. going up probably the snow and ice <coughs> chemical costs going to go up again so it might be in a situation where it might make sense to buy it this fiscal year where they're waiting for the prices to raise right now it's a low like a five-year low Four years ago, it was $69 a ton. We're getting it now for $44 a ton. Well, uh, you know, I, I guess there are a couple of issues here. One is that if, if the DOR uh, doesn't approve of the method that we use for billing, we need to fix that, okay? Because the DOR has gotten uh, pretty stringent about checking things, uh, and they've been all over <coughs> towns for even little minor things lately. So I think we should fix that. And if that results in a deficit in the budget, then I think we have to find a way of resolving it, whether it be a, a transfer or, or, or whatever. We'll have to, until we understand what the total impact T is. Town meeting is, is, is really the only way we can resolve it. Because remember, we're, we are retaining uh, half a million dollars in unspent free cash <coughs> for June town meeting. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that would be an expense that we would consider the transfer from yeah. free cash. So it's going to go in one place or another, but we ought to have it in the right bucket. It's not, you know, it's not going to change what we spent, but I think it's fair that we put it in the right place. So we'll deal with that in June town meeting or uh, whenever we, if we have to sooner, we'll have to deal with it sooner. Uh, but, you know, when I look at the amount of dollars total, Michael, on that sheet here for 2011 and compare it to 2012. I don't see anything wrong with it. You well, do? I, I think it should be a lot less in 2012 due to oh the fact God, that. Oh, my God, yeah. Big time. Due to well, the fact one thing, I, Liz I and I, I can just say something. 
historically the preparation of equipment for the storm it's like a fire department you don't just go we have to get this stuff ready to go it's not just the plowing itself it's the preparation for the storm and the recovery after the storm um, city PBD double a1 bond rated we did it there it was an issue I worked for city Springfield which was a state receivership everything was scrutinized and never was an issue there, there's a cost to maintain the equipment and prepare it for the storm and recovery after the storm so that's in there there's no there would never be a zero charge if it didn't snow the entire winter. We must, just like the fire and police, we gotta be prepared to go at the door. So that, that is reflected in there. I, and we have a base cost no matter what the amount of snow is, mm -hmm. which that's probably you don't know about. No, I, I understand, but Dick, last week I came in to sign payroll. In there, from the 17th to the 22nd, your guys burned 520 hours of overtime in one week. Mm -hmm. I know we had snow in there one day, one day. I, I'm not trying to be picky here, but you know when you walk around town, you talk to people and say, this is the greatest year ever. We're not going to spend any money on snow and ice. And so we just have to answer to them. So you need to help prepare me to go out that door tonight and be able to say to people why we've spent this much money. And when I see 520 hours of overtime in double time in one week, in a week that was 50 degrees a couple days, 40 degrees, 30 degrees, and then we had some snow at the end, help me out. Just explain to me the 17th to the 20th. 22nd yeah. how you can have that many hours we've overtime. taken advantage of the weather to do things we normally could not do for maintain we cannot go out and do any kind of construction so we're taking advantage to clean facilities maintain equipment get stuff ready so we're taking advantage of the time which is not snowing to get us stuff ready this is the lowest well, snow ice in why, 30 why years snow and ice why is that not why is ice. that in your over 500 hours in overtime for that week why is that in overtime? One week. that should be regular dpw work uh, i don't it, see how it's in it snow and ice more than just the regular time you're right the number is high I, i'm not disagreeing hours? with you it's but excessive we've taken the time to uh, do some things for facility maintenance and equipment maintenance we just never had the time for if i didn't know any better <laughs> it would appear as though because there's been a lack of snow and ice and because the crew probably received quite a bit of overtime last year they weren't getting the, this year this is a way in which to shift some expenditure over into the snow and ice overtime budget to get routine maintenance done on your equipment if i didn't know any better looking at it because if you can't justify to me why those 500 hours in that week spent on overtime snow and ice like michael said i don't know how we go out so people in the community explain this you can take a ride down the DPW garage and take a look inside. That'll be, I'll show you what was done. Why is it associated with 500 hours of snow and ice overtime expenditure? Why? Again, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow for snow, so we took advantage of a time. I made a judgment call to get some stuff done that benefits the town in the long term, which beats one of your goals to pick, fix up the DPW facility. So I made a calculated risk to get that work done and it took more time than I thought. You're right, it is, it is excessive for a week. I, I can't support approving this motion to allow you to deficit spend. I think something has to change here. Well, and just so you know, I, I yeah. on the way here, when I got this email, I picked up the phone and called over to North Red over to Reading, talked to Peter, and I asked him what where they are. Now their operation I think is a pretty sizable more than ours. Mm -hmm. And they've spent to date two hundred and ten thousand one hundred and nine dollars. And that includes doing some snow and ice tree stuff related to the storm back in October. Right. 210,000, that's the town of Reading, which I think has a far more bigger operation than that, than you. No no disrespect. City PBD but did what, 226, what brought the light to me was when I came in the sign, that, I don't know if sure you looked at it and you read it over, it just didn't catch your eye, but 500, I added it up right there, 520 hours. So, and I'm glad you agree that it's a little excessive. And you know what, your guys, I, I, I feel bad for them because I know this is an important income for them and I don't begrudge them of anything, but we also have to do what's right in the best interest of the taxpayers' money. And I would love a little feedback from the Finance Committee on this because I think what you're saying is an inappropriate use of the money, Dick. I really do. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like at least a little help here, a little guidance, a little feedback. I think we raised the question, we saw the numbers last week. We don't know the answer. I don't know why. You know, we looked at the overtime and, and the, the hours dollars look very high um, in a year with, with little snow. The first we heard, or I heard anyway, the 31,000 plus 77 was for the storm. You back that out 
still $46,000 worth of overtime this year compared to 85 for last year. And not quite, a little bit more than twice as much in a year that we've had very, very little snow. Um, <coughs> it looks excessive. I don't know the details of it, but I'd give Dick the opportunity to, to give us a, a report on why we, why we used it. If it's uh, discretionary items that are, that are going to uh, uh, keep the equipment running, there may be some justification for that. I don't know. Okay. But the number, the number does, it, does it look good. What does the FinComp say concerning the 500 hours that it was expended during that? I know, but I know, during that one week, and it sounds like it was went I to I don't know. maintenance. It of sounds very high. Okay. But I don't know the details, of it, so I'm not going to yeah. pass judgment on all of the hours are spent on because I haven't heard, heard what they were spent on. Um, it does sound high. Last week we were made aware of the fact that there was going to be a deficit in the snow and ice budget. We didn't have all the information. We had a limited amount of information. I posted a meeting. so that we could hear what Dick had to say about it. Uh, so a lot of this information is quite new to us. But um, before, before we decided to jump up and down, um, we wanted to hear, we wanted to get more detail and we wanted to hear from, from Dick. Um, I did stop by and try and see Dick um, between our last FinCom meeting. We received this sheet this afternoon, too. Uh, well, I see two, two specific issues here. One is that charges to snow and ice that were inappropriate need to be reversed, and charged to the uh, uh, DPW budget, and if it's overtime, it should be charged to the, their overtime account. And then if there's a, an issue with those budgets as a result of it, then that needs to be resolved somehow. The question of why spend all of that, those overtime hours in a week, you know, I, I think we all deserve a complete answer of what was done and why. So I think there's two issues here. Uh, I think if you subtract out what was done for the storm that was charged to snow and ice, one, and then subtract out from here or at least identify uh, in, in the overtime what legitimate overtime was spent on snow and ice related, whether it was equipment or whatever, just so that we get a, an accurate measurement of what we're actually spending in the snow and ice budget. I think we, then we're, that's owed to us and, and the public. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mike, in your conversation with Reading with regard to their dollar amount, I think you said like 245? 210. 210. And change. Did that include, and that I think about, I think you did say this, did that include the removal of all uh, trees and debris and so on? It, I didn't get the detail, but it included some hours where to do storm, the storm related in that October storm. There are some hours in there for that. I don't think they did the tree removal like. Did. I mean, they, these guys did a phenomenal job. Oh, they did. They above did and beyond. Yeah. And I don't think any of that should be discredited in all this. Right, but right. Uh, where the money should be appropriate is what the discussion is. And, that, and that's so I don't have a detail right. exactly what that So it's is. possible that there could be a, a number there that's for tree oh, removal I mean, and so on. We provided a service. They picked up everything. There was a, a cost to doing that. Yeah, the question, the, the one issue is should it have been charged against snow and ice, according to our finance director? DOR regulations, it should have been. So that's got to be fixed. If, if, yeah. if it's obviously, if it's a storm, and everything gets lumped that, together, sir. I would assume. I mean, you have a huge storm, it gets lumped together. It's not a maintenance issue, it's a recovery issue with the trees. Right. Correct? So I think that's why they have it in, in the snow and ice. All right. And I know Sean feels that it, that it shouldn't be. And well, no, I, I think, I think. Elizabeth 
clearly said that the DOR does not allow for that to be charged against snow and ice. But 